I would like to share with you the book, The Hanukkah Magic of Nate Gadol, written by author A. Levine, illustrated by Kevin Hopkins. The Hanukkah Magic of Nate Gadol. Nate Gadol was a great big spirit who had eyes as shiny as golden coins and a smile that was lantern bright. In answer to people's prayers, he made things last as long as they needed to. Sometimes the tasks were huge, like when he got the call from above to make a tiny bit of oil last eight days and nights in the far off long ago. And sometimes it was smaller things, like keeping a flower fresh long after it should have faded to keep up the spirits of someone sick in bed. Big or small, the task would suit Nate either way. It didn't matter if he was making butter stretch for an important cake or keeping a dam strong in a storm. Singers didn't need him necessarily to hold a very long note but if a person's whole life depended on it, you could count on him. Nate especially liked the Glasser family who took a boat over from Europe during what should have been the Purim holiday. They spent every last penny buying their passage. So of course there was nothing left over for the gift baskets. So Mrs. Glasser had brought along her last bit of chocolate planning to share it with the children for the holiday. But when the time neared and she looked at it, the small lump, which was wrapped carefully in a handkerchief, her heart sank, knowing it would not be enough. Yet come the eve of the holiday, when she pulled out that handkerchief, there was not one lump, but three. And every time she broke off a piece, it seemed that there was more there she hadn't noticed. Nate loved stuff like that. They were such a hardworking bunch, those glassers, so friendly too. And when they got to America, they shared what little they had with their closest neighbors, the O'Malley's. When the days got colder, they gave an outgrown coat to Fergus O'Malley and little Elijah Glasser helped push the O'Malley's potato cart home from the market. But no one was prepared for that winter of 1881. That year that cold came early. The harvest was slim and the crowds in the markets thinned. Mrs. Glasser shared their food around as best as she could and sometimes skipped her portion. Then next door, baby Carrie O'Malley got sick and her family had no, no money for medicine. Nothing Nate Goodall couldn't do about that. He couldn't stretch what wasn't there. But Mrs. Mr. Glasser sold a small bench he had been carving and gave the money to the O'Malley's to buy medicine for Carrie. Nate could stretch that to last till she was better. Still, it meant there was nothing left over for Hanukkah sweets. Oh, well, Mr. Glasser said to Mrs. Glasser, Han Hanukkah chocolate's nice, but it's not so important. Of course, they both knew the kids would be disappointed. That night happened to be Christmas Eve. The wind howled through the cracks like an angry cat and snow began to settle on the rooftops where Nate Goodall stood looking out over the street. Suddenly, Nate heard a rumble of something like hooves on tar and a voice shouting, Ho, ho, behind him. 
It was a man in a bright red suit. A gang of reindeer, reindeer breathing clouds heavily into the cold air and a sleigh that looked decidedly off kilter. The red suited man was not happy. Hey, Nick, what's the matter? Asked Nate. You see, the two of them knew each other from way back. I don't know what happened, Santa said. The sleigh magic is nearly empty, and there are a lot of people having trouble believing this year. Afraid so, said Nate, thinking of the valleys. Then suddenly an idea came to him. Hey, Nick, you got any chocolate loaded on that sleigh of yours? Could I borrow a little? I'm sure we could find something in all these presents, said Nick. A happy handshake, and a few minutes later, each friend had helped the other. Santa's sleigh was now sparkling with Godal magic, and Nate's sack was full to the brim. In the O'Malley's apartment, boxes with ribbons and shiny paper spilled out from underneath the tree. And in the glassers, big bags of Hanukkah chocolate sat outside each person's bedroom door on top of something that had never been there in years past. Boxes with ribbons and shiny paper, too. After that, the idea of Hanukkah presents really caught on. I mean, what could be bad about presents? And if times were hard, there was always someone they could turn to. Because Nate Goodall was never far away, if a family is one latke, one candle, or one wish short of a magical holiday. And that's the story of the Hanukkah magic of Nate Goodall.